Okay, hi everyone. This is episode two of the Caregiver Collaborative Series, and I am James Whitney from the Maryland Assistive Technology Program. We are underneath the Maryland Department of Disabilities. So I'm going to get started. This episode is all about medication management, adherence, and uh, telehealth. Um, so, so just to uh, have a brief background about our program and what we do in case you missed episode one, is that we are a, a statewide assistive technology resource that provi uh, have provides statewide access to assistive technology through equipment demonstrations, loans, and also with our reuse and financing arm. And we also do trainings and webinars that we record and put on our website. Um, so if you go to our website at, at www.mdtap.org, there is a link to our uh, archived webinars. And assistive technology, also known as AT, uh, can encompass a wide variety of items and techniques from low-tech items and equipment, such as maybe a cane or a low-tech glass handheld magnifier and all the way up to uh, higher tech devices like uh, computer access, uh, high tech video magnifiers, screen readers, uh, even eye gaze technology for uh, computers and communication devices. So we have everything from low to high tech in our library across all different kinds of disabilities, whether that be blind, low vision or deaf, hard of hearing or any other uh, physical disabilities as well. And our whole premise is that uh, we, we help provide assistive technology to our clients to help increase that individual who has a disability's independence, quality of life, and success in participating in their daily tasks and activities. So just to get started, here's a quick flow chart of our services. Um, so, we, uh, so, so however you might find us or reach out to us, that could be just emailing or calling me directly or anyone else on our team um, or filling out our survey on our website, then I can speak with you. I can set up a time to do a consultation um, and I can find out more about that individual's abilities and disabilities and maybe where they're struggling or wanting to improve their uh, overall participation and successfulness and uh, engaging in activities and tasks in their daily life. So after I get more of a full picture of that individual, then I may have a couple of recommendations that I would suggest for just trying out certain devices, at which point I can do demonstrations. I can show those devices and, and whether that consultation be on Zoom, I can show them just on the camera and discuss them in uh, detail or if that individual is able to actually travel to our on-site location, which our mothership is in Baltimore and central Baltimore. And we have other satellite contracted locations with a couple centers for independent living in a few different areas in the state of Maryland. And I will get to those later, um, but I can demonstrate these devices. And at the end of that demonstration, um, I can discuss this with the individual themselves or even the caregiver or mom or dad or whoever's involved in this process. And, uh, we, and all of us can work together and, uh, and uh, overall decide if they wanna take that device home with them, at which point I can go down to here, which is our device loaning process, which I can loan that out to them for up to 30 days. And that gives them a chance to take that device home, try it at school or work or at their home or anywhere that they might need to use that device or complete the task that they are trying to improve upon. Um, and that gives them a chance to trial and error devices, see what does work for them, because that's our ultimate goal, but also to see what does not work for them, because that's also valuable information to help stop someone from buying something that just isn't a great fit for them and, and saving that money and then and using it towards something that actually does work the way it's intended to, and that is the best fit for that client. Um, and then after the loan comes back to us at the end of that 30 days, at that point, I can try a different device with that client, or if they want to move forward and try acquiring or purchasing that device, uh, we don't sell these devices here personally, but I can help that individual find uh, vendors online, price comparison shop, and at times I can help them find discounts, um, which just depends on the device itself, but, um, but we are a part of that process as well. And I'll talk about our reuse and state financing efforts a little bit later in this uh, slide deck. 
Um, and real quick, this is a little screenshot of our online website that has the uh, virtual AT library that keeps a nice record of all of our AT devices. And we, we do our best to keep it updated, but we are always purchasing new things and acquiring new uh, all kinds of new devices for our library to help expand what we do have and also stay up to date with the latest and greatest AT devices. So our online inventory can be found on our website as well as a home modifications directory, which has a pretty comprehensive information uh, guide about the process of purchasing and installing home modifications. And that includes tax information, um, contractors, vendors, um, and all that good stuff. So it's a very comprehensive document that can help someone from start to finish get the process of home modifications going. We also have a loan closet directory that is another link on our website that has the uh, contact information um, of a number of nonprofit organizations and other agencies in the state that are able to uh, distribute and loan out. Sometimes it has a charge, sometimes it's totally free. It just depends on that organization themselves. Um, and that is typically dealing with durable medical equipment, such as walkers or wheelchairs or rollators, shower chairs, tub benches, um, and so forth. So anything that might be seen as like sanitary equipment or a mobility equipment, we do not have in our library. Um, but anything that falls outside of that, there's a good chance that we do have something along the sorts of the other devices in our library. Um, and we also have a list here, that uh, a link of our archived webinars for all kinds of different various topics. Um, that could be things like adaptive dining and self-feeding. Um, it could also be like computer access webinar, could be adaptive gaming and video games um, and so on and so forth. So we always try to do as many of these as we can fit into our schedule every year across all different kinds of categories of AT, just to help inform our constituents, other professionals, clients, and the like about just different AT uh, to overall devices and services. Um, a little bit about me is that I am James Whitney. I graduated from VCU, which is Virginia Commonwealth University, and I got my doctorate degree in occupational therapy. Um, and and prior to that, I did go to Salisbury University and I graduated with a bachelor's in psychology and a minor in sociology, which I was able to use that to go to graduate school and then get my OT degree. And then, and then I began working with Marilyn Papp um, as the AT clinician, assistive technology clinician, that I get to use my background experience with occupational therapy. And now I get to use that with assistive technology in order to empower individuals to increase their quality of life, helping them become more independent and successful in engaging in meaningful activities through the use of assistive technology and adaptive devices and equipment. Um, so it's been really great being able to combine both worlds together. And with that being said, let's dive into episode two of our AT for Caregivers webinar series. And episode two is all about health management and medication adherence. So first, we're going to talk about medication management. And that will start with pill organizers. So it could be something just like this. I'm sure everybody's probably seen more or less something along the lines of this type of device. But this is a seven-day, it's a one-week pill organizer. But it does have the additional um, the compartment for a pill cutter all the way on the far left there. So if you needed to cut a pill in half or take smaller doses of a certain pill and cut it into quarters or halves, it does have that built in. So that makes that much easier as it's just right a part of this. Um, it's also detachable. So I could detach any of these days if maybe, okay, it's Tuesday and I need to run some errands or anything, or I'm, I'm just on the go. Then I could take that, I could detach it, place it in my purse or a pocketbook or book bag or pocket even, and have my uh, medication with me. So it is detachable. Um, and each section is a self-contained single day pill box. So each of these, so I uh, was one for every day of the week. So you get seven in total. And it's uh, designed for easy pill removal and to help increase adherence to uh, taking medication. So uh, this is, um, and also this is 
uh, like relatively low cost for an AI device like this. Um, it's $6.99 for this one right here that I found online. Um, and all of these links are embedded in these titles here. So it'll take you to the web page that could be found for purchasing any of these devices. Um, so here is another one that I found that I liked because it adds, so it has seven days of the week, kind of like the last one, but each day of the week gives you seven different compartments for that day. So if you have to take seven different kinds of medications in one day, or maybe at seven different times of the day, um, it gives you a little bit more um, just overall organizational uh, boxes for those pills. So it gives you a chance to have seven different times a day for seven days of the week. So it gives you 49 boxes for one week just to be able to have all your different medications put in there. And each day is a different color. So it can help you stay organized on what day of the week it is as to what color box to grab. And other than that, it operates pretty much like the uh, one we just went over in the last slide. So, so something like this costs $39.95, but um, has a little bit more uh, broadness to it. So I wanna talk about this next device called the AccuTab. Um, so this can be for, um, for a pre-planning, it has 21 compartments and it can hold up to three different doses per day. So it's able to, to hold up to, uh, each compartment can hold up to 35 aspirin sized pills. Um, and it's, it's relatively small and can fit under like a kitchen cabinet. Um, and it has an easy lever to help release the medications. And then once you do release that lever, they will drop out into your hand or even a cup. Um, so each day has three slots for seven days of medicine and there's 21 in total. So uh, it may require some help with organizing this and getting it set up from a caregiver. Um, and it comes with a manual and all that stuff to help with organizing and getting this thing to operate. But um, it simplifies the task of planning for up to three medication times per day. And that dispenser can be loaded weekly by the individual or a caregiver that can help enhance medication adherence. Um, so it's a really cool device there and it's only $45.95. Um, so it's not crazy expensive given that it has a lot more versatility. Um, so I just wanted to show just a few of those pill organizers. They, they come in all shapes and sizes, but a lot of them more or less operate in a similar fashion. Um, and I will talk about a couple later, but they come complete with applications for smartphones, and I, I put that in a separate section. Um, so next is medication reminders. So it might look like something like this, tab time, the tab time timer. So it's, uh, it's got eight independently set alarms that go off at the same time every day. So as you set them, it'll be set for that, that time every day. Um, but it has up to eight separate alarms. So once you set it, you can forget it because it'll keep those times every day. Um, and then it'll, it'll go off until the battery needs to be replaced. So it'll just keep going off every day um, until it eventually dies. But it will, um, it'll be obvious and let you know when it's getting lower and lower on battery. Um, it's also pocket sized. So that's a pro of this device small enough, you can keep it with you in your uh, the purse, pocketbook, book bag, or just right in your pocket or in your jacket or coat. Um, and simple setup, just three buttons. So the hour and minute, and it's got a mode button, a pan between the modes and which timer and, and all that that it would like. Um, and it has nice instructions and a, and a little manual that comes with it. Next is another device. Also, that one is going for $16.45 online. But our next device is the Med Center Talking Alarm Clock and Medication Reminder. Uh, this goes for $49.95. Um, and this is a talking alarm that alerts users when it's time to take their medication. The alarm sounds periodically until the special alarm acknowledged button is pressed. So it'll keep going off every so often, you know, every couple minutes until you press alarm acknowledged. And that would indicate that you actually had the pills and took them and were able to uh, adhere to your medication schedule, excuse me. 
Um, and it has loud and extra loud settings that can be used for anyone that might be hard of hearing. Um, it's got a nice large type display. So anyone that might be low vision, it's very large text and um, uh, a little bit easier to see um, and can plan up to four daily alarms, morning, afternoon, evening, and night. So you get four alarms per day. Um, and then it comes preset with default alarm times at like the morning would be 7 a.m., afternoon, 1 p.m., and evening, 6 p.m., and nighttime, 1030, but that can be changed and altered. And it has a backlit display for nighttime viewing. That's the Med Center talking alarm clock and medication reminder. Um, so over here next is the e-pill station. And this is a locked automatic pill dispenser with a tipper base. As you can see in that top photograph, this person is able to grab that handle and just has, it's uh, secured on either side of the device. And that makes it easy to tip it over as if you were pouring out maybe milk out of a milk jug, but instead of that, it'll tip over and, and pour these pills out. Um, it does lock, so no one can mess with it, or if the client is confused or they wanna change something, it would have to go through whoever can get into it first um, or, or, or whoever has the key and is able to unlock it and then get into it, which would, hopefully be the caregiver or family member. Um, so this helps with medication adherence. Um, the tipper base and stainless steel medicine cup allow for easy, no spill dispensing. Um, and it's got no monthly fees. It does have a one-time fee of $389.95. And then once you purchase it, it's yours to keep. And it does have up to six daily alarms with sound and visual notification. And it's got 28 compartment, it has a 28 compartment tray and each compartment holds 15 aspirin sized pills. So you can load this thing up in each of the 28 compartments and each compartment holds 15 pills more or less. Um, and that can have you set up for a week or two at a time with the help of a caregiver. Um, so this is a nice device. It's a little bit more on the expensive side, but it does have uh, a few more features that others do not have. Um, so here's another one called the Med Alert pill dispenser. This one is $79.99. Um, and, and we do have this one in our library, as well as some of the, the earlier in the uh, slide deck pill organizers. We don't have the, the, the AccuTab or the ePill station, but I wanted to just showcase those as they are uh, just different devices with more versatility. And I wanted to just convey that to our. Uh, our viewers here. Um, but the med alert, that this can be used with individuals with maybe any mental illness um, or, or cognitive limitations or impairment, um, anyone who has vision loss or, or anyone who has really complex medication regimen. And it's just hard to keep straight. Um, so this thing features, uh, it has medication up to six times daily and the unit retains program settings even when you change your batteries. So if it does die on batteries, just pop some new ones in and it has the same regimen, it's already programmed, it won't erase that. Um, it has a 28 compartment tray that can hold up to, in each tray, hold up to 18 aspirin size pills per container. Um, really portable. Uh, we do have this one in our library. You know, it's not very large, maybe the size of, uh, the size of your head or face even just it's um, about yay big and it's ideal for in-home use or used by caregivers in a caregiving facility um, it is tamper proof so it has a locking system that can help reduce uh, just overdosing on certain medications or taking the wrong ones at the wrong times of the day so it does lock so that you can't get into it and and change anything without a caregiver or some kind of medication supervisor overseeing that. It does have a louder alarm sound with blinking lights. So if someone's hearing impaired, it'll blink, flash, and it does have the ability to have the alarm sound increase in volume. And it'll sound for 30 minutes straight or until the medications are dispensed. Um, so it won't actually turn off until you actually dump out the, the, the medication in your hand. Um, 
So, because a lot of times people might just press the alarm button and walk away and forget about it, but this will keep ringing until you dump them out. And once the pills are in your hand, you are much more likely to take them. That's the med alert. So next, I wanna get into some apps for medication management. So this one I wanted to talk about is the Hero. So this device is a monthly uh, subscription, $24.99 per month or just under $300 a year at $299. It holds up to a 90 day supply of 10 meds. Um, so it supports any pill size or shape. Um, it fits all standard kitchen counters. Um, so it does have an app that you add your medication list to the app and you also receive pill time reminders, missed dotes alerts, and you can track what you took and when. So it can help you keep track of all your medications. And then I can check over the course of the 90 days and I can look and say, okay, I only missed two or three medication times. And other than that, I was able to take them all successfully. And I can share that information with my doctor or any other healthcare provider. Um, it also does uh, support remote caregiver monitoring for safety and medication schedule management. Um, so a caregiver can, can monitor all this remotely with the app and make sure that you are staying up to date with your, your medication and that you're not missing doses. And if there is any sign of missed doses, then at that point, the caregiver will know and can intervene appropriately and assist that person or client or patient or family member with getting back on to their regimen. Um, it's HIPAA compliant with, with their, their security software and protocols. Um, and it can, and uh, you are able to order delivery of medications every 30 days and free hero refills. So having a, a pharmacist from the hero company coming to your house and helping you refill that this, uh, this device is included in your monthly and or yearly subscription costs. So that's pretty cool. Um, so that is the hero. Over here is the MetaCube, and we are actually working on getting one of these in our library right now. Um, so if anybody wants to uh, check this out, please contact me. But this can hold up to 16 different medicines, and this is at the price of $1,699. Um, so a little bit more expensive here, but it can hold 16 medications up to a 90-day supply. And uh, you can refill a medication in two minutes even if the brand changes. So they're trying to convey the message that it's quite easy to change. It is lockable, so it requires a key to get in. And as you can see in the bottom left photograph here, that the, the medications will come out of this bottom drawer in the bottom right. And it is able to give you a view, a picture of the pills for each dose given. So it'll give you a view of the pill for each dose so that you know which ones you are taking. Um, and it picks each dose as a set. So it never picks the wrong pill. Um, and it'll track all of your medication adherence, just like the, the last device we were speaking of. It'll track that over time. Um, and it has a tilt sensor alerts for possible tampering or incorrect dosage or spillage. So it'll actually alert the caregiver or whoever's involved with uh, moderating the uh, medication in and out of this device if there's any kind of signs of tampering or anything like that. So I did include a link down here to how it works. And also there's links embedded in the tops of all of these slides that can take you to their website to complete with um, information, pricing, and how to order one and so forth. That's the MediCube. Over here are some other apps. This is the Express Scripts free Android. So it's free for Android operating softwares and also iOS, Apple products. Um, so it acts as a pill reminder app and a pharmacy all in one. Not only can you set daily medication reminders, but you can also order refills directly in the app if your health insurance has the Express Scripts benefit plan. So I would check with your healthcare providers and insurance and make sure that it would be covered. And if so, this could be an option for you or one of your clients or patients. Um, and this makes it easy to track and order your, your prescriptions all in one place. 
Um, I can order refills within the app for myself or for people that I'm caring for as a caregiver or with family members, et cetera, on the plan. I can track those prescription orders so I can stay up to date on when I'll receive that order. And I can also set up automatic refills so that maybe on the first of the month, every month, I'll just get a new order um, if I have a 30-day supply or, or however long I would like to make that automatic, uh, uh, automatic refill set for. So that's totally customizable there. But this is the Express script. So the app itself is free, but you want to double check with your healthcare providers and insurance plan about if they can cover this benefit plan. There's another app here that's called My Therapy, which is also a free app. Um, and whether it's medication or a measurements exercise, this app will help you stay in control of your schedule. Um, so you, uh, I can add family to this account, caregivers, um, just to be a uh, additional safety net and be notified about uh, medications and appointment reminders. Mm -hmm. So my therapy not only documents your health, but allows you to visualize patterns within it. Um, so like whether that be blood pressure, um, heart rate, pulse ox, um, and also medication adherence, and all that good stuff that has to do with your health. It's a free app that can help you track it and see patterns within it. So I can see if there's certain times of the day or after certain strenuous activities, I can check my blood pressure and I can start to paint a picture of, okay, it really does spike at this time every day or right after I do these activities, this is when it spikes. So it can help you paint a better picture to share that information with doctors and healthcare providers um, and, and whoever else might be interested, like your caregiver can help track this with you and be able to, to, to uh, more strongly uh, convey your, your uh, healthcare trends over time to anyone who, who might be involved in the, uh, the overall healthcare of that client or patient or family member. Um, so I want to get into some medication accessories right now, and that might be something like this eye drop guide. Um, as you can see in the top right photograph here, that um, it can help administering eye drops. It can help make that process a little bit more simple. And this is also great for people of all different kinds of, of physical abilities. So even if I was a TBI patient or an individual or someone who has a spinal cord injury or maybe an amputee or any reason that I might only have strong use of one upper extremity, then I might be able to use this just to help me out with keeping my eyelid open and helping position the bottle in a way that I can easily squeeze and drop a couple drops right into my eye. Um, it also just might help just anyone in general with just opening the eyelid and dropping drops because um, it can be a tricky process. Um, it can fit virtually all eye drop bottles. So um, it's not like a one size type thing. It can fit almost any bottle unless they're really, really big. Um, or really, really small, then it might not hold it in place as well. It helps hold the eye open and the bottle in correct position. Here's another pill cutter right here. Um, that I don't need to explain too thoroughly, but basically it has a V-shaped holder right in the center of this part right here, so that I am able to put any size pill you know, as far down in that V-shape as it'll fit. At which point I close, I close this top down, squeeze it tight, and it'll chop that pill in half or however it's positioned. Um, and it also has a, a crusher part that's in the bottom. So I could put a pill in this bottom compartment and then I can just close it and I can twist this graded kind of uh, spot here. I can twist that around and it will mash the pill up and put it in more of a powder for me. Um, so this is the three in one pill cutter. And it's also got, you know, it's quite, uh, it's hard to tell in this photo, but it's like a wider, uh, larger kind of a, a cutter. So it's great for anyone who might have dexterity issues as it's easier to hold on to. Um, and with the, the uh, V shape in here to put pills down in, um, it could be great for anyone who has low vision as I can just feel that V shape, put the pill in there and close it. It doesn't require me with a knife or anything that might be considered you know, unsafe um, or, or anything like that. So this is a, uh, it's a very versatile device here for the uh, price of $5.95. Um, and really quick, just this, these are super cheap, uh, inexpensive keychains. They have a little slot that I can, uh, whoops, I can twist that open 
and it, it'll open up and I can put some pills in there. So I can take that on the go with me on my keychain, on purse or wallet or clutch. And I can take this portable um, pill holder with me anywhere I go. So that way, if I have to run out or, or go anywhere or take a walk, I can still have those medications with me. Um, here is a multi-pill cutter that in case there's a caregiver who's trying to cut up a bunch of pills at once, th this is a little bit more efficient is that I can place many pills all in this thing at the same time and I can cut them all together. So instead of cutting one at a time, um, uh, with, you know, it could be a uh, burden of time. I can just do this a little bit more efficiently and I can cut many at once and get the uh, monthly prescriptions or, or however frequently I adjust them and refill them. I can get them all scheduled and ready and cut and organized for the client in a more efficient manner. So this is the multi-pill cutter. Over here is just another stainless steel, just cheaper option. Just wanted to give you guys multiple options for just a basic tablet cutter. Here's just one more. Right here's a magnifying pill cutter. So it actually can zoom in on the pill up to 2X for just more accurate splitting and just make sure I can see exactly what I'm cutting down on. Over here is a heavy duty pill crusher. So as you can see, I can put one, two, three, they, they have four or five pills in here right now. And then I can twist that and grind them up and then it'll be turned into a powder at which point uh, the, the, the top portion can also be used as a drinking cup. So yeah, I could fill that up with some water and I could be able to take the medications that way. And over here is a heavy duty metal pill crusher. Plus it's got these little paper cups. Um, so again, just another option, a little bit more expensive, but this is like pharmacy quality. Um, it's chrome plated, all metal tabletop uh, quality pill crusher. It's heavy duty for years of trouble free use. Um, it's for convenience. Pills can be crushed between two paper cups. It's like a souffle cup. Um, and then I can crush the pills between those cups. So it doesn't get all over the uh, device itself. And also that powder will just end up in one of the cups. So for easy to uh, take out and dump anywhere it needs to be uh, uh, to just dumped out. And also has mounting plate available. So I can fasten it to a table or countertop. So that way it doesn't move around. I can just fasten it down. I can have more leverage, push down on it. I can up any of the pills that way. Um, so I'm going to talk about telehealth really quick. Um, so what is telehealth? So telehealth is the use of communications technologies to provide healthcare from a distance. And, and, and uh, these technologies may include computers, cameras, also video conferencing, the internet, and satellite and wireless communication. So examples of telehealth could be a virtual visit with a healthcare provider through a phone call or a video chat. Um, also, uh, remote patient monitoring, which lets, you pro which lets your provider check on you while you're at home. For example, you might wear a device that measures your heart rate and sends that information to your uh, provider. Um, a surgeon using robotic technology to do a surgery from a different location could also be considered telehealth. Also sensors that can alert caregivers if a person with a dementia leaves the house. Uh, so anyone that's at a risk of e uh, elopement and having those sensors that can let them know if someone's gone, also considered telehealth. Um, also sending your uh, provider a message through your electronic health records, your EHRs, and also watching online videos that your provider sent you about how to use something like, for example, a uh, inhaler. So seeing those online videos, all this is considered telehealth. And also just getting email, phone, or text reminders that it's time for, for example, a cancer screening, or it's time to check on your, your medication refills, or you know, it could be any of the, any of the uh, examples I just mentioned, among many others. Um, so just getting into telehealth and kind of all those things I just talked about, I'm, I'm going to uh, discuss a few different devices. So, so one being a smartwatch. Um, and that comes in lots of different brands and shapes and sizes. So uh, whether that be Apple Watch or a Fitbit or a Garmin, which can be anywhere from like $120, $129 and up so that they can get much more expensive than that. Um, but these are excellent at tracking your health, like blood pressure, um, also tracking things like your pulse ox, 
how many steps you take each day, um, your heart rate resting and with uh, exercise and activity and so forth. Um, so it's able to, uh, you know, like keep an eye on these things, track them over time, and then it can share that information with healthcare providers, caregivers, or anyone else who's involved in that person's health. Um, and I did list here at the bottom left corner, but there is another smartwatch that is called the Wise smartwatch, which is a product created by Amazon. Um, and I mentioned this because it's listed at only $39.98 online. So significantly cheaper than the other name brand watches. And it does a lot of the similar features. So, so it may not be completely compatible with your iPhone or Android as far as the, the phone functions, but it is still able to track all the same stuff health-wise that we just mentioned. So it's a cheaper option. Um, it may have some limitations with compatibility with softwares on other phones, but it is still able to do a lot of the same health tracking that the other smartwatches can do. So I wanted to definitely discuss that. And there's also devices like talking blood pressure cuffs um, and so forth. Um, also stethoscopes, you know, anything just like that can have a talking and speaking out um, option. Um, so, so this is a talking blood pressure monitor that's listed for 117 online. It's com compact and convenient. This blood pressure monitor allows you to, to monitor your health anywhere at any time. So um, it provides quick and accurate readings and speaks out its results. So if anyone was blind or low vision, then it'll actually speak that out loud to me so that I can still hear it and track it over time and provide that information to uh, caregivers or healthcare providers. Um, it provides speedy and accurate results. So it doesn't take long. All you gotta do is press that start button for this model specifically. There's all kinds of these out there as far as the blood pressure cuffs, but this model is quite easy. You just gotta put that, um, the actual cuff around your upper arm and then you press start and it will slowly close around your arm. And in just a few moments time, it'll give you the reading of your systolic and diastolic blood pressure. Um, it can also speak in English, Spanish, or French. It's battery powered, so easy and portable. And the memory bank allows for more than one user. So I could preset my gender, height, weight, et cetera, and I can have that saved. And then I could also have maybe wife or, or someone else that I might share this with also have their information in there. Um, so it's supposed to make it easier to be used among multiple people. Um, so, here is the Sky Angel 911 that is used for, as we said earlier, any device that could be used to, to help track and uh, notify any emergency authorities of elopement or wandering. It's considered telehealth, so I wanted to touch on this product right here, which is the Sky Angel 911. And this can be used inside the home or outside. Um, it's a two-way speakerphone that's able to contact um, able to contact 911. So I would press that button. I can call 911 and speak with an operator with a two-way speakerphone. Um, it has a built-in accelerometer for fall detection. So I could actually, it'll actually know when someone has taken a fall, it can pick up that change in velocity from being standing still to that fall. It's gonna be obviously a pretty rapid change in movement. So this device can actually pick up on that change and um, using that, it can help you alert authorities. Um, and it has no monthly fees or cellular contracts needed. This is a one-time fee that once you buy this device, it's ready to rock. Um, and with, with, with the uh, GPS, it can be used anywhere um, because it tracks where you are. So you don't have to program this and say, hey, I'm in Maryland or I'm in this part of Maryland. It knows where you are through the GPS and satellites. So um, it's ready to roll once it's purchased and it needs to be charged. So that's one thing that you should always take into consideration. Um, and it can be worn on a lanyard or you know, in your pocket jacket, you know, really anywhere. Um, and it's great for just having in times of maybe if the caregiver's not right next to that person and then I realize they're not in the house, then I can GPS track them and say, okay, now I know exactly where they are. So it's a great device for safety, alerting uh, emergency authorities and for just tracking. 
Um, and again, as far as tracking elopement or wandering, here's a device for um, iNotify that is also a fault detection technology that is designed to alert family and friends or caregivers if a fault occurs. So uh, as soon as you buy this device, same thing. There's no landline needed, no monthly fees, no contract. And the uh, individual can wear this on their wrist or it even comes with a belt clip. So not everyone likes to have the uh, device uh, on the lanyard around their neck. It's a little too obvious. It might make people feel uncomfortable. So having this around your wrist looks like a watch or just something on your belt. It's more discreet um, and does the same fall detection technology as the Sky Angel 911. So I misspoke earlier. This does not have the GPS capabilities like the Sky Angel, but it does have that fall detection accelerometer built into it that can help notify someone that a fall has taken place. Maybe that person can't get up or et cetera. Then it can help with contacting any emergency authorities or family and friends. Um, and lastly, when talking about health, healthcare, telehealth, it's always good to uh, always incorporate things for mental health. Um, and here is something that can be purchased because um, a study found that an estimated 86 plus thousand fall injuries each year were associated with cats and dogs and having pets and animals in the house. And everyone likes to have a furry companion and a furry friend, but um, as, as you are you know, aging, um, as an individual, it becomes less and less safe for you. And having one fall can result in, in lots of different health complications. So maybe something like a virtual pet, um, it could be something for a person to keep them you know, comfortable, to give them companionship. It can be fun um, and also safer. So it's an interactive cat and pups are all about the ease of care and convenience that pairs with technology for the best possible experience. So there are joy for all virtual pets. So there is the, um, the cats, 110. I think the dog is more expensive because there's probably more dog people in the world, but cats always get a bad rap. Um, and lastly, I wanted to just, just mention while we're thinking of telehealth and just, just participation in health virtually, there are lots of different avenues for virtual exercise classes. So I've listed some of those here online, is that there is Gaia, a virtual yoga. It's, it is uh, subscription-based, but it can be downloaded on your you know, a laptop, phone, tablet, or TV. Um, also, there's in-studio, so you don't have to always do virtual. If you can get to the studio, they also have that as well. You can get a class pass, go indoors, outdoor classes, and all, all of that. Also the YMCA, you know, contact their local YMCA or just go on their website because a lot of these are chock full of just lots of online classes for any YMCA, oh, excuse me, any YMCA member. So all those classes, given you have the right equipment can be done in the comfort of your own home. Um, also, hey, yeah, Boston Globe, it has all kinds of local teachers, um, and senior centers that are offering everything from Zumba, weight training, yoga, and, and meditation all online. Um, also, there's Silver Sneakers, um, which has lots of live classes to on-demand pre-recorded classes to choose from. Um, and also Peloton, um, it's got lots of workout classes and videos um, if you subscribe and are a member. Um, so that's just uh, uh, other stuff just to keep in mind. So as we wrap up here, um, I just wanted to show that we do have a, uh, a video of our AT library on our YouTube, which can be accessed just straight through YouTube. Or uh, if you go online to our website, there's links to all of our social media or at the end of this PowerPoint as well, there's links to our YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, et cetera. Um, and this is Denise Schuler. She is our... AT specialist on staff that I work pretty closely with. She has started to transition more to our reuse efforts, um, which I did want to mention really quick as a good segue is that our uh, reuse center is, so, so uh, it is donation based. So our MD tap uh, 
our main demo and loan library purchases all their devices brand new for loans up to 30 days, as we discussed earlier. But our reuse center, uh, it, it, it relies solely on all kinds of donations. So it depends on what's available as to what's been donated. But that is also able to offer open-ended long-term loans to any of the clients that reach out. And as long as they have what they're looking for, then it can be 30 days like we do. It could be a couple months. It could be a year, two years, five years. So really, however long that client or individual needs that device for, it is theirs to hold on to with the expectation that it would come back one day, but it's open-ended and long-term. So there's no real timeline or a time constraints on when that's needed to come back. So at this office location is housed in Columbia, Maryland at the Howard County Loan Closet. It is not a facet of the Howard County Loan Closet, but they were nice enough to give us a space within their, their building. So that is where we are set up shop with the high-tech AT Reuse Center, and they have devices there that could be CCTVs, video magnifiers, certain eye devices, adaptive computer, keyboards, mice, switches, AAC speech devices, um, also amplified telephones and, and more. So uh, she does have a link online that takes you to her living online inventory. And I say living because she's always updating it with things coming in and going out. Um, so I would still 100% either shoot her an email or phone call and just double check what is available and see if that fits what you would need. Um, so that is the AT Reuse Center. So back to the video, I uh, definitely implore anyone to check this video out as it goes through our library and talks about lots of different devices across all kinds of disabilities, whether that be blind, low vision, deaf, hard of hearing, or any physical impairments, computer access, braille note takers, you know, speech devices, so on and so forth. So we have all kinds of stuff in there and she takes you through the whole library in this virtual pre-recorded library tour. Um, and as I was saying, we do have Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and we've recently just launched a TikTok um, online as well. And we also have a blog, an AT blog, um, and that just talks about various topics around AT and other resources and state initiatives, and maybe just cool stories that we felt like sharing. So it's always cool to check out our blog and see just what we're talking about this week or this month. Um, and then we are complete also with contact information. So this is our central mothership location here, Central Baltimore at 2301 Argonne Drive. Um, and we have emails and, and, and also phone information here to contact us. As we just talked about, this is the AT Reuse Center. And also our, uh, our partnerships with our regional centers for independent living. So here's one that we also work with, which is the Bay Area Center for Independent Living. And that is in Salisbury, Maryland. And they also have a demo and loan library with some AT devices there. So if one of these is closer to the client, I may have them just drive to in, and pop into one of these locations if they can't make it to Baltimore. Um, but we can always ship devices out as well. So that's always an option. If someone still wants to talk with me and do a consult, then I can ship devices straight to that individual through USPS mail. We also have another contractor in Southern Maryland and a Mechanicsville. Um, and that is the, the Southern Maryland Center for Independent Living. And we also have another contract with the Western Maryland Center for Independent Living, which is Resources for Independence. That's in Cumberland. And some other centers for independent living, like the Image Center, Independence Now, Accessible Resources for Independence, Freedom Center, and the Howard County Loan Closet, also have, uh, also have community AT libraries. Excuse me. So they have small libraries, but they have a few devices in there, and they have someone that can definitely talk to you and find out more. And if needed, can send you over to us, or you can always just reach out to us at any point as well. Um, so that ends episode two of this caregiver collaborative series that was focused around medication management, adherence, and telehealth. So thanks for tuning in, and I will see you on the next episode.